In this tutorial, we're going to take an already created file and import in some toolpaths that we've created in Photo VCarve to create this lovely plaque for Granddad for Christmas. Okay, to start this tutorial off, we're going to go ahead and open up an existing file that we've already created. So in your tutorials folder, in your importing Photo VCarve files folder, you should find a portrait frame.crv file. So if we click that and we open this up, You'll see that we have a file already set up with some vectors. So we have some outside vectors here to define the outside border of our plaque. We've got some names of our grandchildren and we also have a nice little message here for granddad that says Happy Christmas. And then we have some extra vectors here for some nice decorations that we think that granddad will probably like. Now we've already gone ahead and created some tooling for these. So let's have a quick look at that by jumping over to our Toolpaths tab. And one at a time, we'll go ahead and preview these toolpaths. Let's start off with our decorations and text. And we're going to preview that visible toolpath. And you see that they've all been V-carved in there nicely and colored in red. We selected that by using our global fill color. We'll take a look at our OG border. So we've set up a tool that's the same shape as an OG cutter. And we're going to put that in our machine and we can view our toolpath. That would be the nice border here that we have. And then what we're going to do is Take a look at our cutout path. So if we preview that tool path, you'll see that we cut that out. And if we double click on this waste material, we can remove it as well. So that's gonna look like a pretty nice plaque for granddad. And the only thing that could make it a bit better is if we put in a photo of Eloise and a photo of Thomas. Now in Cut2D, we can't create a V-carve tool path from a photo. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to have to create one in photo vcarve and then import it in but before we do that we need to figure out how big a space we have to actually put our two photos so if we go over to our drawing tab and we go to our 2d view and we select our rectangle tool we can draw a rectangle if you notice at the bottom right hand side of my cursor now we have some dimensions well as soon as i start drawing a box or a rectangle, those dimensions will change. So I can use this to kind of guess how big a space I have. And it's hard to see down there, but it's about 12 inches by six inches I have. So 12 across by six up and down. So that gives me a good six by in six inch square for us to put each of our grandchildren's photos. So that's good to know, because we're gonna need that. The tool pads that we bring in from Photo, Photo VCarve cannot be resized inside of our software. So it has to come in at the same size that we are going to actually cut it at. So now that we know that, let's go over to a copy of Photo VCarve. And we're gonna load in an image. And again, in our tutorials folder, in importing photo vcar files we have two bitmaps one of a baby boy thomas and one of a baby girl eloise so let's start off with thomas we're going to click that and select open now we've already gone through the process of doctoring this file so that it makes it easier to cut only thomas's head and face we used a third-party bitmap editing software and we colored in the background this mustard yellow which isn't a color that's anywhere else in Thomas's photo so we can go ahead and use make a color transparent so if we click that we can select this background color and it will make that mustard yellow section transparent so the tooling will only be created on the bitmap face portion of Thomas so our next step is going to be to set material size. And luckily, it's already six inches wide by almost six inches tall. So that's the perfect size. And we've got some negative space here on both sides. So that means we can actually get both of Thomas and Eloise in there without any problems. We're going to set our origin to the bottom left-hand side. And the thickness really doesn't matter so much, except we want to make sure that it's greater than our thickness of cut that our tool is going to do. So in this case, 0.125 will do the trick perfectly. And we'll click Apply. And then we're going to set up our cutting parameters. Now, if we were actually going to cut this, it's important that you go in and make sure that you select a tool that you have and all of the tool parameters are set appropriate and safe for your machine and the material that you're using. So in this case, we're going to use a 60 degree V-bit. 
and then we're going to go on to setting up how we actually want that to cut. So we want the maximum carving depth to be 0 0.04 of an inch. Our line spacing is at 100%. So if we want to decrease the number of lines, we can just turn that up or we can turn that down. And it will tell us here how many lines we're going to have, the distance between lines, and the number of passes it's going to take. So you can set that to be what you think is best for your job. Right now we're going to leave it at 100%. We're going to leave our line angle at 30 degrees. That's perfect. That means that both of Eloise and Thomas line angles will match and 30 degrees is perfect for that. It will look quite nice in the end. If we needed to, we could invert our light and dark, but in this case, we want our dark areas to be deeper than our light areas. So right now we're gonna leave that the way it is. And we could increase the contrast if we wanted those dark areas to be even deeper. But for now, we're just gonna leave that the way it is. You'll need to choose your rapid clearance gap that's safe and appropriate for your machine. And then we can calculate that. And as soon as we do, Photo VCarve will show us a preview of our tooling. And you can see that the darker areas are deeper and the lighter areas are lighter. Our tool just barely skims the surface in some places, which is great. And then instead of saving off our tool path, what we're actually going to do is we're going to save off a photo VCAR file. So we're going to go up here to File, Save As, and we're going to call this babyboy.pvc for photo VCAR. And we'll click that and that's saved off. So now if we go back to our Cut 2D software, we can go up to File and down to Import In, a Photo VCarve Machinist or Cut 3D file. We can navigate over to our folder where we save that off and we can select Baby Boy, click Open. And you'll see that in our 2D view, right off the bat, we get a bitmap representation of the tooling. And if we look at our 3D view, you can see that there's the 3D tooling right there for us. And also, if we flip over to our Toolpath tab, you'll see that we've added in an extra toolpath called Baby Boy P. So we know that comes from Photo VCarve. So let's go back to our 2D view for a second. And we can go ahead and now select this bitmap representation of the toolpath and we can move it wherever we'd like to on our job. So we'll put it right about there. That looks pretty good. Right where he is, that's great. And if you look in our 3D view, you'll see that he's actually moved over to where he belongs. Now we can preview that visible toolpath and we can see what Thomas is going to look like on our plaque for Grandad. And that looks really great. Perfect. So let's go now back to Photo VCarve. And we will open an image and we'll go and get his sister. Open up Eloise. And the same thing has happened. We've taken this image and we've gone into a third party photo editing software and replaced the background with a color that's not represented in the actual rest of the bitmap. So we can go ahead and select this color and we can make it transparent. We can set our material size. Now, one of the, another great thing about our software is that it's remembered some of our parameters for us. So in this case, we're gonna make the height be six inches and we're gonna set our origin to the bottom left we can zero off the top of our material. There's our material thickness. It's in inches. We'll click apply. We'll set our cutting parameters. And these are the same cutting parameters that we used for Thomas, but it's always good to make sure you check them all over to make sure they're safe and appropriate for your machine. And we're just going to calculate that. And again, we're going to see a nice preview of that. And that looks great. So let's go up and save that off. We're going to save it off as babygirl.pvc. Click save. Go back to our Cut 2D, go to our 2D view, go to File, and we're going to import in another Photo VCar file, Baby Girl. Open that up, and we're going to select her and position her right about here. I want to make sure that the bottoms kind of line up. So I can either try and drag using my mouse, or I can go ahead and nudge her into place where I think she looks good. I think that's perfect. We will actually will move Thomas up just a little bit. Maybe one more. I just use my cursor keys on my keyboard to nudge. So now that we've moved Thomas, we've sort of messed up our tool paths again. So let's just go and reset our preview. Go to our 3D view. Let's preview all of our tool paths. We can go back and re-preview all of those. And there's Thomas and there's Eloise and that looks great. And we'll delete off this waste material 
I think that looks pretty good. And there's a few things that I might want to change. I could flip the tool path for Thomas horizontally just by pressing H on my keyboard and he would flip over in the 2D view and then recalculate the tooling if I wanted him to look like he was facing his sister a little bit more. But I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks really good all over. So now what we can do, we can close this off and we can save off our tooling. And then as always, we should do when we're done a project like this, go up to File, Save As, and we should save this off under photo frame underscore tooling. We'll save that. Now with that, that concludes this demonstration. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you make some really nice GIFs with PhotoVGarve in your Cut2D software.